Hello, Rich Colvin here again. This video is the first in a series I'm planning to make showing some projects I make on the MDF Rose Engine Lathe 2.0. The idea came from a number of comments I've read or heard where people say they don't know what the machine can do or how to get started. I have a few other projects in mind, so I'm planning to make the, more of these videos, but really no promises on how often they will come. I'm still working, unfortunately. One caveat, I am by no means an expert ornamental turner. It would be easy to criticize what I make, but really that's like shooting fish in a barrel. I hope I can get you thinking about the art of the possible, and really that's what this video is all about. It's going to be a little bit longer than the others I've made, so I've tried to speed it up where it can get tedious to watch. Today's project is a shaving brush. I like a hot shave, and shaving soap lathered up using a shaving brush is a great way to get there. There are some store-bought ones like these, and you can see this one is... Uh, from a brand uh, Abercrombie I think I, I don't know but uh, it's one that's useful for cleaning equipment now and then this one is from uh, Art of Shaving and it, it works well I like the the brush itself but it's it just doesn't have a lot of pizzazz I mean it's just pretty bland so <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna make one that has a lot more pizzazz there are some kits you can use for making a shaving brush with a stand but I found them a bit lacking so this one's gonna be a little bit different one thing in particular I don't like is the stand for hanging the brush as there really isn't a way to only get a stand and I've never found one that hangs only the brush and not the, also the razor. And I found razors are such a personal preference that the combination has never really seemed good. I don't like using a straight razor because I don't think I could do it without cutting my face up. But the one I do prefer doesn't fit any of the stands that come with the kits that I found. Plus they take up too much room on the counter. So for these reasons, I prefer to make my own stands, one like this, and I'll show in a future video how to do that. But uh, this one has a much smaller footprint. I can paint it whatever color I want, or I guess I could leave it unpainted like this, but it's not terribly beautiful and it shows off how bad my welding skills are. I like that it has a masculine texture, and I also like that I can add a wooden medallion down here and uh, that's going to be the next video in this project series. But a kit could be used if, if that's what you want. So for now, let's just say we're going to use that. So this is one I made in the past, and it's, by the way, a fail. Um, I used a A24 rosette around here. You know, and that's fine. It worked okay. But what I found is a couple of things. One is it's, it's not especially easy to hold. And these pointed pieces here, they don't jab into you, but I just don't like the shape and the feel of it, okay? So, I want something easier and more comfortable to hold. So my book here has all of the rosettes and all of my paper chuck, or paper drawings from the paper chuck for each one of the rosettes. And so I've looked through this and found one that I think is going to work. And that is the PF9, which is, of course, named after Paul Fletcher. And uh, in case you don't know, Paul Fletcher is really considered the father of the MDF Rose engine. Uh, John McGill worked with him on it and then, you know, greatly expanded on it. But I, I think this could work well. And I noticed that as I get, you know, down at the smaller diameter here, which some of this will be, I'm going to have to use an amplitude adjuster to, to make it even out like it is out here. Okay, so that's fine. Um, I'll talk about that more later. But I wanted to make sure it's okay, so I did some prototyping. And prototyping is something that I learned really from furniture makers like Mike Pekovich. It lets me try different shapes and combinations of cuts and even combinations of rosettes. When I prototype, I use woods like this, which are ash. Um, there's ash trees all over the place that you can get, <clears throat> and some maple. But I find ash is, is easy to use, and it, and it does take the cuts reasonably well. I just don't like the amount of grain that you see here because that, that doesn't, it, you know, at the end of the day, you don't even see the ornamentation from the rosettes. So it's not a good finished piece for most things, um, but it, it does work for this to let me do a prototype and see, you know, is this the right amplitude adjustment and is this the right shape of rosette that I want at the end of the day. And indeed, what I found is it is. So, 
you know, one of the other things I'll tell you is it doesn't have to be a complete piece. I really wanted to just check the handle part. I didn't worry about finishing this part down here because that doesn't matter for this question, which is, you know, what should this look like, this piece, and then what about the transition between them? And then what about the cut in here? What's it going to look like? Or do I need to change rosettes? Because sometimes the rosette may not look as good when you do it on the end, but, you know, it turns out this one does. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to be using this universal cutting frame because <clears throat> on this um, rosette, I need to capture these indentations where we go from the convex to the concave, and that happens, you know, 18 times around. So um, I need to have this set into a horizontal position, which is what we have here. And the cutter I'm using is this fly cutter, which I got this one from Alibaba, and you know, you could do your own if you want, but these things at a buck and a quarter each already pre sharpened is a pretty good idea. And plus, I need it to have a diameter for this right here to be around one and a half to two inches. So the fly cutter does that very well. Okay. The fork is going to hold this, and to do that, I need to make sure that it fits between the forks here. So for that, I need uh, that to be about one inch in diameter here at this point. And then I need it to be about one and a half inches in diameter here so that it doesn't look too tiny when it's hanging here. You know, this is, this is not good. And indeed, this is even worse, right? It, it, it hangs, but it just looks kind of dorky. So we don't want to do that. So we want this piece up here to be one and a half inches in diameter, which will come out to almost the outside edges here. All right, this is quarter inch rod. That's why it's, uh, it works there. <clears throat> so the distance from the neck here to the end, this is too long. And what happens if it's too long is it hangs down too much. So I want to shorten it up. Again, this was a fail. And so I want this from here to, to here um, to be about one and a half inches. So overall, this is going to be from the end here to end here, it's going to be about two and a quarter inches. I like these uh, silver tip badger hair knots. Uh, silver tip badger hair does really good with shaving. It seems to last well. And these ones from Beartooth Woods, uh, I've had really good luck with. So I, I like these best. They do say they require a 20 millimeter hole, but I found a 3 quarter inch Forstner bit to work better because that's about 19 millimeters. And then what I'll do is I'll test it and make sure I have a good fit because I find 20 millimeters is oftentimes a little big and it just seems too bulky and it doesn't fit well into the end here. So I want it to have a good fit, not too tight, but I don't, I don't want to have a big gap around here um, for, the, for the brush head. Okay? And the depth here that this needs to be is a quarter inch. All right. The other thing is that this end needs to be concave and that concavity is really so that when I set it up this way, it works and doesn't fall over. If I had this to be convex, I'd have to set it on its side or something. And then the brush, as you can see here, once you get them used, it's going to be laying on the countertop. And that's not good. I like it to stand up because I shave both up and down. And so once I get it all lathered up, I shave once, then I can re-lather up again and shave the second time. All right? Other than that, it needs to be a shape that you can hold. I made the prototype, as I said, using ash here. But, it, you know, as I mentioned earlier, it's not a good wood for a shaving brush. It probably doesn't do well in a wet environment. Uh, and it's really not good for ornamental turning in general. Uh, the grain is really too prominent. Um, but, for this, it, actually, it's going to be a mixture, as you can see here, where this area, I'd like to have some grain showing up, but in this area, I'd like it to be such that I see the ornamentation better. So for this project I'm going to be using this desert ironwood. Uh, it's a really hard wood and I think it's really beautiful. This is a slab off this piece and you can see the grain that's going to show up here. So I think that's going to be really beautiful and it turns well on the rose engine lathe. Uh, this is about one and three quarter inches in diameter so that I got a little bit of room to get to one and a half at the end. It's a little bit longer than I need, but that's okay. It uh, allows me to hold it in the chuck pretty easily.
Work holding is important whenever you use the lathe, uh, but especially when you're moving it from um, the Powermatic lathe to the MDF Rose Engine lathe. So I'm going to be using my chuck, a four-jaw chuck, with a drawbar, and then I'm going to, once I have it in here, I'm not going to move it, and then I will actually move the entire chuck with everything on it from the Powermatic to the MDF Rose Engine lathe. Because we have Morse taper on both ends, I'll be able to use the Morse taper adapter here. But I need to have, when I make this, I'm going to be making, you know, this part first and then drilling the end. But then I have to flip it around so that I can do it this way. There are many ways you've probably seen to hold it. You've seen probably, you know, I can make a jam chuck to fit into here. Uh, there could be a screw chuck. But with woods that are very dense, I've found they crack and break or I end up with a hole that I don't need. So... I just don't like that. What I found works best is I cut an indentation here and that indentation fits right into my chuck jaws like that. Okay, So that works well. I just need to make sure that the distance from the end here to this indentation is enough that I don't hit the surface here and um, you know mess up the end of it. So for this I need from here to here to be three-eighths of an inch. And then I also need this diameter so that when I put it in the chuck here, it fits in. Now this one's obviously too small. Again, it was a fail. But the diameter here that I need it to be is going to be about one and a half inches in diameter. If it's too big or too small, the chucks are you know, potentially going to damage this. So I need it to be right at one and a half inches in diameter. So that's how we're going to hold it. That's how we're going to make it. So let's go get to work and then uh, we'll make this first on the Powermatic and then we'll move over to the MDF Rose Engine lathe. Okay, I turned this to round offline. I didn't show, have a need to show that to you because that's just standard turning things. That turned out to also be fortuitous because the piece that I had originally taken had a bit of a blowout here and I didn't think I'd be able to get it out of this so I have a new piece of wood here. And you can see I've got the first indentation that's been cut here. That's what will be held in the jaws. And then the second one here is just for ornamental purposes. I rounded these off rather than just leaving them as a V cut. I think that's going to make it look better. And I've also drilled the end in so that I can put the knot for the brush here. It's not glued in yet, but you can see how that's going to fit. And it seems to be a good diameter here at one and a half inches for this size brush. And, and of course this is going to be much smaller once I get it done. Uh, this piece at the end may be about this diameter. We'll see how it ends up. So that's where we are. I need to flip it around and this indentation here is what will end up in the jaws and then I'll move it from here over to the rose engine lathe. But before I do that I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to trim off some of this wood on the end. Okay, I've remounted the chuck over on the MDF rose engine lathe and I want to check the run out and there's going to be some run out just because Flipping this around is not an exact science in terms of how the chuck holds it, but let's just see how it is. Yeah, about sixteen thousandths. So, it's not great, but I don't think on a piece like this you're going to notice it. We'll see at the end, uh, if indeed it does become noticeable. I want to explain what we're doing here because when I turn this on it's going to be pretty noisy, especially with the vacuum because I just don't like that dust in the air. But this is the first of the cuts and they're going to be two or maybe three more we're going to see. But the uh, first cut is going to be along here and we're going to cut in this direction, which means we'll have a nice cut here because we're cutting downhill, but it's going to be pretty ragged on this side. That's okay though because on this side we're going to do the next set and so we'll take out that raggedness uh, in the next set of cuts. And after that we're going to keep going. Now I didn't show that off camera. I w actually made sure this was level and that's what that little X in the end there is for. It's useful doing that in the uh, unused, the piece that you know you're going to cut off later so that um, you're able to make sure that your cutter is exactly perfectly level. Uh, or if you don't want it level you can set it to wherever you want. But that's where I want it for now. So I'm going to start this up. We're going to run it for a while and you're going to, I'll speed this up as we go 
because it's kind of like watching paint dry after a while but you'll get to see the idea here and again this is the PF9 Rosette in action. need to see where we are in the neck diameter. We need to be one inch, which that's what this is. And I can see that we're well away from that. we got a ways to go. Um, we can also check with the stand. We can see that it's still too big, which is good. It's easier to take it away than to put it back. All right, that's good. So we can see that it's gonna hang well. We got some room there that we can take off at the top. So let's get started on the next cut. The next cut, I'm gonna phase this half a lobe.
The reason I phased it half a lobe is because I want to get the look like this and you can see the concave here and the convex here gives you a nice little flowing line and so that's what we're going to end up with here.
I've switched rosettes here because I don't like the way that end of it just kind of came in. So this is actually a Holtzapfel Alpha 9. It's a new one that we just have uh, come out with. Uh, we also have an Alpha 18, but this is the Alpha 9, which should go well with this uh, Paul Fletcher 9. So, uh, well, we're going to see how it does. also is a shorter cutter so it should make more of an indentation Well, there it is. That's a nice shape. I like that. It's got a little bit of dust there in the middle, so you can certainly just brush that away. It'll come off also when we finish it. 
but um, I think this is going to be good to hold. It doesn't have any sharp points. So here's the final piece. You can see it standing up on the end, which is something you want it to be able to do when you've got soap all over it. I haven't glued in the brush head, so I can show you what it looks like a little bit better. You can see the shape is nice. It's easy to hold. It's got a nice uh, masculine look to it, which is good. It's what I was hoping for. So now I'll put some lacquer on it and finish it, but for now, you can see what it looks like. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this enjoyable. Bye-bye.